Okay, all rise and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Alvarez. Present. Councilman Cypress. Here. Councilman Larka. Here. Councilman O'Connor. Here. Supervisor Hay. Here. Notation extras in front and rear and electronic device, please put it on vibrate. I make a motion to come out of the executive session. No action was taken. Second. All Second. in favor? Aye. 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 First item on the agenda this evening is a public hearing. It's a galley petition, 40 Guinea Road, zoning map amendment R160 to R60. I weigh the reading of the public hearing notice. Mr. Galley? Uh, we need a second. I'll oh. second. Oh, there's a second? Okay. You're on. You may have to speak into the mic, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you can move that. That that comes. Bring it over. Uh, a little bit. Doesn't mic yeah, move? That'll work for me. Yeah, it's okay. Just put the mic out a little bit. That'd be great. Thanks, So this map shows the R160 zone in this gray scale area. The yellow area where the house and the property in question is located is in the R60 zone. Um, what we would like to do is get the property rezoned to the R60 zone to match the rest of the neighborhood. Um, and in doing that, after the zone change would take place, we would look for a subdivision. Um, on the other side of the map, we have the plans for subdivision. here uh, as it stands as it stands now this whole property is just one piece okay in the middle of a neighborhood which is uh, r60 zone and it's almost uh, out of place the way it is the way that we've designed it with the help of inside engineering it matches the neighborhood uh, very nicely and actually the the lot sizes are larger lots than what's required in the r60 zone so the uh, the R60 zone is 1.35 or 1.5 acres. Uh, these lots here, this is 2.16, this is 1.98, and the the existing house is going to stay on a three-acre lot by itself. So one big lot, you're going to keep one of the houses and two additional lots to be made. That's correct. That's correct. Yep. Uh, Furthermore, the, the driveway that serviced the, the main house here uh, used to be on Guinea Road. Uh, we went through the process to get the driveway moved onto Pineview Drive, actually, and closed the original entrance to this, to this property. The, 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 the new entrance is now on a side street, which is uh, Pineview Drive. So, in effect, the two additional lots uh, would only be really adding one additional driveway for the whole project from the original state that it was. Has the highway department looked at the uh, new cuts for the driveways and approved those? Uh, I believe they have. Um, Is that part of your process initially or no? Yeah, uh, Insight took care of all of the line of sight issues, uh, the, the locations of the driveways, and um, as far as I know, uh, there shouldn't be any issue. There's uh, this particular lot has I don't know what the exact amount of frontage is but it's in excess of 200, 200 300 feet it, you know it, maybe even more okay but at this point both of you I mean we're only talking about the rezoning you'll need subdivision yes and yeah. site plan yeah with the board, so. yeah uh, in the r60 zone uh, if it were to be rezoned it would the property could support more than what the uh, subdivision is actually asking for, um, we've we've put you know we've put a letter in that says that we are going to limit ourselves to only this, uh, which are larger lots, and you know could support larger houses, and uh, not have it as chopped up as the zoning allows. I think it's uh, just a better fit. It, it just matches nicely rather than trying to squeeze another one in there even though the zoning could probably allow it 
May I okay. ask a question? You, you yeah. indicated that the property is currently surrounded by R60? Yes, um, it is. The way the property stands, it's, it's actually an island by itself. Um, it's, a little bit, uh, it's a little bit odd. So it seems like uh, I was forgotten about. <laughs> so all of this is, uh, this is Guinea Road. Yeah. This is Pine View Drive. Yeah. My new driveway is here on Pine View Drive. Okay. Uh, all this uh, further north is also R60. The R160, it looks to me like it might, may have been part of this um, Glickenhaus development, you know, large, large plots of land. And, you know, I, I'm not saying that they own this property, but it seemed like I fell into this zone somehow and was not, was not changed over. Um, my neighborhood, because there are no roads on this side because of that big development is there. Uh, and I understand that everything behind us here is green space and probably will remain green space. What we're trying to do is actually making it uh, better and conform to the neighborhood. Nancy, question, Will? Uh, yeah, it's just a, a little bit. So the yellow, unclear. the yellow I, is R60, right? Yes. And, and the red uh, this box, is that's his property. The property so in question. R60 above him, below him, and to the Where is the R160? Yeah. R160 is. So you do abut the R160. We, yes, we do abut the R160, uh, but there are no roads that could service that side of the property. So you're the only R160 on Guinea Road? Correct. And Pine View Drive. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. It's confusing because it's, it's like an, it's an anomaly. Like basically it's almost an island by itself. It should have been zoned way back when, just wasn't. So we're, we're trying to make it conform actually to the rest of the neighborhood. Well, I think way back when, what the town was trying to do was upzone uh, to, to uh, minimize development. Um, or down zone, depending on how you look at it. Right. Um, and I don't know why, whether this was a conscious decision at the time to include that particular lot because it was undeveloped and and larger. Right. That it was appended to the 160 zone. That's my guess. The uh, the house, the one, the single <laughs> family house that's on the property has been there since the 50s. Um, and it's not an oversized home. It's, uh, you know, it's normal. Is that the, uh, the, the Dio residence? Uh, no, no, not the Dio, no. It was, um, I don't know, before me was, um, what was his name? Uh, the Petro, actually, was the name. Yeah. I don't know if anybody remembers. Yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Anyone from the public would comment? Okay, seeing no comment, uh, I'm not going to, should we extend the public hearing for like five days for public comment? But at this point in time, I don't see a need for it, but I, 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 I would just I'll, close, make a, I'll, make I'll make a motion, motion. to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Our next meeting is on the 28th. Mr. Galley. Second. This will come up on the 28th meeting for the town board. Okay. Good luck. Okay. Second public hearing is the Chapter 38, Article 10, Section 138-56-1, Special Bits and Conditional Uses. Please take notice that the Town Board of the Town of Southeast shall hold a public hearing on July 14, 2022 at the Southeast Town Hall, 1360 Route 22, Bruce, New York, at 7 p.m. or as soon thereafter as interested parties may be heard pursuant to Municipal Home Rule Law to consider proposed local law, which if adopted, would amend ch chapter one, 138 of the Town Code Zoning, Article 10, Special Permits and Conditional Uses, Section 138-56.1, Paragraph A, to provide that accessory apartments established in commercial or mixed use zoning districts are not required to be owner-occupied. All persons having an interest in the foregoing matter be given an opportunity to be heard at this time. I make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? All right. Okay, this first came about, believe it or not, came from 
the town itself. Uh, we uh, inherited or was donated a building on uh, 2360, 2366 on Route 6 heading towards Carmel. This would affect the area basically from the um, Putnam County Savings Bank to the bridge leading toward uh, Route 6 and there's right at the end of it there's like a uh, hairdresser with an apartment and there's very few houses on that road but some of them already have this mixed use and this would bring in a compliance and again our, it was ours we have now since sold the property in the past month but the use that we had proposed at that time is still in effect and that's why this is here this evening now after we put it forward another individual came forward with a similar request and i think there's two other properties out there would benefit by this change my only question tony is um I spoke to a planning board member and they mentioned that it was only in one specific zone, but the way I read the local law, it applies to any commercial or mixed zone. Yes. It's been a mixed use on that whole zone. Well, no, no but this reads any commercial, any mixed zone. Any, any commercial zone that allows for residential use. And that's only that zone? Uh, well, there, I, I can't answer that question off the top of my head, but, but it is a relatively limited mixed use zone. Okay. Before, um, I mean, I know we're not voting tonight's public hearing, but before we vote, I'd like to confirm how. Does it how affect much any this, other? Yeah. I don't believe it does. It was only intended for that section. Okay. So if it has to. So, I wonder if we just list the zone then. <coughs> Well, Ash, so if a zone were to change, it wouldn't pick this up in it. Um, well, we'll we'll find that out when it's the the zone again. I mentioned was pretty much from the Putnam County Savings Bank to the the bridge there, and it wasn't intended because this is a special this was special zone. Is it not identified here? Well, the, remember we recently just. We did, did some it. zoning changes there. That's unrelated to, to this. That's why I just want to make sure it's only that zone. It or at is. least I know what, what uh, it is. We're well, that's about. not necessarily true because there are, uh, like on the uh, SR22 zone, there are allow you're allowed to have accessory apartments. Right. And with the but special, I think there's a, there's pursuant a, there's a special there's permit. And if a special permit, what this is saying is that what, what the special permit sections, Article 10 says that is if you have a, uh, an accessory apartment, it, it's got to be owner occupied. Uh, the, the property's got to be owner occupied. And when you have a commercial building that is, is, I think what they're saying is that when you have a commercial building that has an accessory apartment, there's no owner that's occupying that apartment. Right. Yeah, it just I, it, it, it seems that there's plenty of board members that think it's only that section of town, and clearly Tony thinks it's only that I don't, section of I, town. That's not the so, way it's written. Yeah. yeah. It's written to amend the special permit section. Can this be changed to just affect one zone or impact one zone? Um, are you asking constitutionally? Or, I mean, you can certainly write it any way you want it. Okay. But... It's not to say they couldn't be challenged at some point in the future. Okay. Any other questions on the board? Find out, we'll let you know. Okay. Public? <coughs> okay, on this one, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing and take written comments for the next 10 days. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll find out. Okay. Next is a presentation, New York State Electric and Gas, Dylan Mayoshi, uh, installation of AMI smart meters. Welcome. Great, thank you. Was it easier to stand yes. here? Yes, sure. Right. So good evening, everyone. Thanks for uh, letting me come talk to you today. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Dylan Mayoshi. I'm the local government and community relations person in the, here in the Brewster Division uh, for NYSEG. Uh, so what I'm here talking about is AMI, or known as smart meters. You have to come. You have to move it forward or backward. Which way you have to go? You bring it forward. Does it make it smaller? Which way does it work? 
<coughs> no, go forward. No, move the table. We want us to move the table, I'm saying. Yeah. We can move the table more if you need it. That's better. So, uh, so back in 20, uh, our previous rate case uh, that was negotiated with the New York State Public Service Commission, uh, we received funds to do a capital project uh, at the request of multiple supervisors within the Brewster Division to convert our current analog meters into AMI smart meters. And so, what is a smart meter? So, a smart meter is essentially bringing us up to the 21st century in utility technology. This is something that has been a proven concept nationwide. Uh, our other company, uh, our other avant grid company, uh, Central Maine Power, has already implemented this. Uh, other utilities such as Con Ed have implemented this down in Westchester. Uh, so for here in the Nyseg Brewster Division, we're looking to begin in early uh, 2023. And that's gonna encompass not just Putnam and Westchester counties. Uh, so we're gonna do this in four phases. So we're gonna do the North phase, then the East phase, the South phase, and the West phase. So Southeast will fall under the East phase and Oh, just, just the East phase. Uh, and that both for gas and electric, because I know uh, quite a few customers have gas here in Southeast. Uh, so what people can expect when these installations occur, uh, based on our previous experience from other companies and uh, things like that, uh, one of our top priorities, uh, unfortunately there are people who just try to take advantage of the elderly community uh, once the public is made aware of these type of projects. So any person will be wearing a shirt very similar to the one I'm wearing this evening. They'll be carrying a NYSEG ID and they'll have a NYSEG logo on their car to ensure no confusion for any residents uh, that may get a knock on their door uh, from one of our people. Now there's no need for entry into the home though, is there? If a meter is located in the home, then yes, which is, Rare? mostly upstate that tends to be the case like in rochester that's a big concept but down here it shouldn't be okay Never uh heard. so for people who are getting their gas meter upgraded uh there will be no service interruption with their gas and for people who are getting their electric meter replaced there'll be about a 10 minute uh service interruption and the reason that is is just the person has to take out the meter and reinstall the we're hoping it'll be less than 10 minutes, but just for the sake of argument, we're you know, letting our customers know it'll take up to 10 minutes. And for residents in Southeast, we'll be doing gas and electric at the same time. So they'll be getting both meters replaced at the same time. So we'll be doing this mostly during the workday from Monday through Friday, eight to four. Uh, we are gonna do Saturdays hours, uh, typically mostly for large commercial customers to not interrupt their businesses in their, uh, their operations. And then we just ask our customers, you know, uh, once they know that this is coming, that, you know, they make sure there's no brush around their meters and things like that, um, just to make it easier for our technicians to get in, in and out quickly. Uh, so having an electric meter replaced uh, in the interruption. So the key, the key thing for the interruption is for any life support equipment customer or any person who may have an oxygen tank or whatever their case may be we're going to work with them <laughs> we're going to make sure there is contact before any meter is removed in order to ensure that they have all the equipment they need and they have a game plan and so we do have a dedicated team working on uh, those specific customers uh, we're also planning on working with the public you know work from home so a, a new normal now and so you know if someone uh, we knock on the door and someone comes and says hey I have a conference call and it takes 15 uh, I got 15 more minutes on this conference call can you wait yeah we'll go to the neighbor's house and you know we'll work with them on that uh, and then as I said for the larger commercial customers we'll attempt to schedule appointments as needed uh, to make sure their businesses are impacted uh, any customer that wants to know more information, they can go to niceeg.com slash smart meters and a lot of this information is already up on that website. <clears throat> Dylan, is, is there any warning before a guy knocks on your door? Great question. I 
knew I forgot something on this slide. I was looking at that. Great question. So, so the process on how this, uh, how we're planning on doing this is so about three weeks out prior to being within a municipality, we are going to mail postcards uh, to the customers to inform them that we will be, uh, you know, coming and replacing their meter with a smart meter. The day of our technician will knock on the door and say, hey, I'm here to replace your meter. And so if no one is home, we'll just replace that meter. You won't even know if you're out at work, you'll come back and you'll see a door hanger saying, hey, your new meter's been installed. Uh, as I said, if someone uh, is working from home and they have an issue that they need a couple minutes or so to kind of get themselves in a good, safe workspace, uh, you know, we'll work with them and go to the next house and then come back and that But, but you don't know that it's tomorrow or next week or anything like that, right? Uh, for, uh, we're we're going to try to uh, drill down a little bit more. So once uh, the postcards go out, I know my plan is, uh, you know, I'll reach out to Supervisor Hay and I'll say, hey, you know, these postcards went out to the town of Southeast residents, you know, can you put it on the town Facebook and things like that, just so then people are aware, you know, I don't think we're going to be able to get down to the street level and say, hey, Main Street's getting replaced on Tuesday. Um, just because we're going to have a lot of technicians and contractors doing this with us. How many do accrue? Like, if you do a particular road and there's 30 houses, I mean, are you going to have like one person do the whole street and it's going to take the day, or what's the plan? Uh, so we typically do two in a car. Uh, uh, we're back to two people in a car uh, since uh, you know we're hopefully kind of over the hill on COVID here. Um, so there'll be two people in the car, kind of one driving, one being able to hop out and, you know, they can switch back and forth. So, you know, it, we, we expect each phase to last about a month to two months, uh, for all the municipalities. So over that course of the month, two months, uh, Southeast will be taken care of. So like I guesstimate, you know, kind of the March, April range. Now if the power is cut to a home and a person's not at home, is there any chance that something could go wrong and the power doesn't go back inside the house to make it power, but they threw a breaker. Because you get a person's home, they may be on vacation for two weeks, they come home, the refrigerator has been off because of uh, the disconnect at the time. I don't know if that's possible. Well, so so that is the nice part uh, about smart meters and I'll talk about it a little bit more in depth, but typically, uh, so right <clears throat> now, as the technology exists of what is at your home currently, uh, when there is a power outage, we cannot see if your individualized house has power or not. We can only see if your street has power. Okay. And so once these smart meters are installed, you know, the technician's going to make sure it's running. And then uh, I'll talk about it in a second, but our network is actually able to ping every 15 minutes, uh, you know, real time data to our Bington uh, command center. So if a meter is not running that'll register in our system and then a technician would be able to go out and see why that meter is not running so it allows us to go down to the individualized home level so it'll prevent uh you know typically uh, you know I'm not sure if anybody here during a storm power comes back up and you know our website says main street's back up but you live on main street and your your <coughs> house doesn't have power and you're calling us and saying, "Hey, why is my why is this saying it's fixed?" And my I'm still sitting here in the dark. So <laughs> that's is, is, uh, Tony. Was your question that if they if, whether the meter works or if it like tripped the main and there was trip, a draw, I, yeah, I, would, I, would you be able to make sure there's like a draw coming from the house before you leave? Yeah. I, well, so it, so it would start producing the number immediately uh, as soon as the meter's in. Uh, okay. You know, uh, <coughs> it'll start going through the kilowattage and. Our technician will make sure everything works uh, beforehand, and then if someone is not home, they'll have that door hanger, and if they come home and something is wrong, God forbid, uh, you know, they can call us, and you know, we'll we'll work with them. Replace or, any spoiled food if it gets spoiled. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know about are, there, uh, <laughs> are there any concerns or anything done definitely for people that have automatic generators with uh, ATSs? No, so this this will not affect generators. Uh, this transfer over. Okay. The same vein. What about if you have solar? Uh, it it should work exactly like your current meter does. It'll just be essentially a plug and play. It's just updating the actual meter. So anything that's connected, whether solar or whatever, it'll just plug right back in. Why wouldn't it trip the generator? That's question. 
So I've had that question, I, had, uh, I asked it and they told me no, I'm not the technical expert, so please forgive me, but my, my understanding is uh, the way that kind of gets paired in, our technician would just re-hook the generator in to the meter. So yeah, but what, no, what's gonna happen is, so when they take the power offline, hmm. my ATS is gonna transfer me over to generator while he's doing the meter install. Right. So, as I said, I can find out for you, uh, but, uh, you know, my operations team told me that generators wouldn't be affected at all. No, no, I'm not saying they'd be yet. affected. It's going to come on, but it's, uh, you know, the, the concern, you know, I'm just saying, like, because if you're going to shut off a customer to, you know, take the bowl off and redo the meter, that house is without power for 10 minutes. As soon as my as soon as I my generator notices a loss of power, it's going to kick off. <laughs> and when the power gets turned back on by your person, it should shut yeah, off. Then it, then yeah, then it comes yeah, it off. It shouldn't have caused your problem. Yeah. I was just surprised by the answer. We just yeah. want to make sure so, that. Yeah, we yeah I'll, I'll, it. so I'll double confirm and I'll let you know tomorrow, Supervisor. Okay. Maybe hook up your switch, right? You want to let it keep well, yeah. So it's so uh, so <laughs> this is something that you may have noticed has started. Uh, in parts of our division to go up and will continue to go up during this fall. So this is, uh, you know, our wireless mesh system that will be able to, as I said, ping uh, the meters every 15 minutes. Uh, and so these are starting to get installed this summer into the fall. Uh, so then our system's ready to go when we start installing the smart meters. When you're fully up and running, there's no more meter readers? That that's a yep. So, so the the key benefit of smart meters is this is will essentially fully eliminate any sort of estimated bill reading, uh, because these ping every 15 minutes. So when your bill is generated, you are getting whatever that official number is uh, every month. And you know we are pairing you know smart meters this uh, this fall. We are kind of un unveiling our updated billing system that we use in Maine to pair with. Uh, AMI, which is going to be great. And uh, is the rate you pay locked in per month, or is it changing as the rates change? So, How often do the uh, rates change? So, question. are you speaking about the, like the delivery rate or the commodity price? The commodity price. So, the commodity price is based on market factors. So, whatever your current market factor <coughs> is, uh, you know that's that's why there was uh, look at the. If you get your meter read every month, you'd pay for the usage in that month, whatever that rate was. Right, the, the average for those 30 days of your billing cycle. Oh, you pay the average, the rate is the average. Yeah. So, so now is that going to be the same or is it going to be like if you use a lot of electricity today and the commodities high, it's going to be No, so that, so that stays the same because currently like if your bill is from the 1st to the 30th, uh, you know, we take the average because that changes daily and that's through uh, New York ISL and that's the marketplace where NYSEG gets its supply. So that is, you know, one day it might be 12 cents, another day it might be two cents. So we right. take the average of those 30 days and that's what the customer pays. Okay, thank you. But theoretically, they could do what you're saying eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that wouldn't be good. So uh, this also gets uh, rid of, uh, you know, customer reads because currently, uh, you know, people who don't want to deal with estimated bill reads, they can submit their customer reads to us uh, to provide an accurate billing. Smart meters will take care of that. Uh, and as I mentioned, it'll give us faster outage response because, you know, if Main Street's out of power, we can see, you know, a certain amount of houses on Main Street are out of power while the rest are still generating power. And we can see where that tree landed on the line, which gets our crews there faster and get your power up later. Do these, can these be disconnected remotely? That last point on there was about moving. So these do have the ability. So if you move in, to a house and you call and you make your payment to NYSEG, we can turn on your power. They don't have to wait for a technician. Same thing with moving out. Uh, we do have that ability. You know, if you are, hey, we're moving out on the 31st, instead of us having to send a technician, we're able to shut it off for you and be good to go. So another benefit is uh, we're gonna have an energy manager tool uh, that will be on our NYSEG app and website. So under your account, you're able to go in and see. So I know that chart's not 
uh, the easiest to look at, but uh, the bars are essentially like the temperature of daily temperature and the lines are the kilowatt usage. So when the temperature is low, you probably see a spike in energy simply because you're turning on your heat. Um, and the example I've been using is, uh, you know, people run their pool pumps during the summer. And so, you know, they might see and look at their usage and instead of running their pool pump for six hours, they run it for four hours. And, uh, you know, that gives them the opportunity to kind of take a hands-on approach to their energy usage. And as I said, uh, you know, we, we're trying to give as much knowledge to the customer as possible uh, and give them the ability to make decisions regarding their power to the best of their ability and kind of figure out, you know, when, when is there spikes in energy and, you know, may turn, turn it up the heat a little bit uh, or, you know, lowering the AC depending on uh, the circumstance. Uh, so right now we're in the uh, official uh, elected official outreach and municipality outreach section of our outreach plan uh, this fall we're going to be doing open houses uh, so this fall we're going to be doing one in each county and we're going to do open houses with the poster boards kind of exactly like that picture and we're going to have technical experts at stations where people can go and ask questions and uh, you know learn a little bit more about this and we're going to do one in each county and when uh, we lock those in uh, with our team from Mower that we are working with. Uh, we'll make sure that, you know, the supervisor has the information to pass along to everybody. Uh, same thing with event, uh, events, you know, this time of year is great because it's all the town community days, it's, you know, the fall festivals, things like that. So our uh, contractor team at Mower is helping us set up uh, booths around these community events. Uh, they may may or may not have reached out uh, here, I'm not sure, uh, and we're looking to, uh, you know, kind of have those community tents where people can walk up, ask questions, and uh, we can provide them information. Uh, so with that, I'll jump to questions, and uh, I'll start with, I know the supervisor sent a question from a resident that yeah, reached can, out. May you mind if I share that with the public as well? Oh, of course. Since, since it's... Uh, Okay, so I have a resident by the name of Kevin Adore and from Brewster, dear supervisor. Hey, I see the representative of New York State Electric Gas is speaking at tomorrow's meeting regarding smart meters. I respectfully request that you inquire with Mr. Mayoshi about their res residents' right to refuse the meters and what fee, if any, they would attempt to change charge for such. Yep. So, uh, so there will be, uh, so there is the opportunity for people to opt out of this if they'd like to. Uh, that is their choice. However, that will come with a thirteen forty-seven a month charge. And I know the uh, resident uh, brought up a uh, previous Central Hudson case uh, regarding extra fees and things like that. Uh, the difference is Central Hudson's network is not AMI. That is, uh, they use a mesh network that still requires technicians and labor to go around and check uh, meters. Our system would be entirely done wirelessly and as part of our capital program, this is something that was agreed to by the Public Service Commission. So that fee will stay in place. Okay, and it's 13? 47. 47 per month? Per month. Extra correct. because they don't go wireless or wireless, uh, whatever. Correct, yep. Is there any cost savings there? because of your operating and maintenance cost savings that gets passed along? So right now, uh, right now we just, in May of uh, this year, we uh, submitted a request to the Public Service Commission uh, because our three-year rate case is up. So that's something that is getting negotiated over the course of the next 11 months. Uh, so I, I don't know that answer right now while it's getting negotiated. Uh, will this affect time of use meters? I assume this, is all meters will be replaced with this? So every meter will be uh, replaced with this. Uh, whichever meter you have in your home, whether it's like a standardized meter or day-night meter, that tool will still be within the AMI smart meter, but the AMI smart meter will be the actual, uh, you know, brick and mortar technology. Got it. Why would a customer want to um, opt out? Their fear of uh, radiation or yeah, so there, there, there are people uh, who have beliefs that we as a company do not agree, and factually, we believe uh, 
do not uh, back up their claims. Uh, basically, uh, people are concerned about radiation and things like that. Uh, and, you know, they pair it with 5G network and things like that. But however, you know, it's been proven with these meters, you'd have to stand next to this meter for about six hours to replicate the amount for one cell phone call of radiation. And you're going to put your mesh router on their pole in front of their house anyway. So. Uh, for central main power, I believe we had about a 2% opt out statewide there. So, you know, so I, that is, we want, we want to give our customers freedom of choice <clears throat> that that is their decision. Uh, but they do have to understand there is a cost associated. And the 1347 is basically because you need to keep a meter reader to correct. Yeah. So Transportation. Yeah. Is your, your mesh network is not 5G though, right? No, so so that does not pair off of any cell tower, so that's not going to cause any drop of coverage or anything in an area. Uh, this is an internal mesh network. Um, I am waiting to hear back from my team of the exact frequency, but I can let you know. It's okay. Now, do you ever post it anywhere about the uh, he sent that ruling on? Central Hudson, do you mm -hmm. have something like that on your site that will answer that question for anyone that might ask it and it doesn't affect you? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. I believe we talk about the fee on the NYSEG.com slash smart meters. I'd have to go back and check. I would uh, just suggest that you do it because there are people out there that have this, like you said, it's 2%. So for those 2% say, if you choose not to, it is 1346 and has no bearing on the ruling above. Gotcha. Yeah, I can I can certainly bring that back uh, because I I know we mentioned the opt out fee on that site. I just don't know what the exact I had not heard of it until he sent it to us yeah. yesterday. Thank you. Can we get a copy of this presentation? Uh, so once I go through all the municipalities, absolutely. Uh, I just have to go through each each town in the area first, just before okay. you know it gets public. It, and and what did you say the start date was for estimated for southeast? I <coughs> guesstimate about probably March, because uh, each phase I'm saying is about one to two months uh, to do, and you guys are in the second phase, so I'd say around March would be my guesstimate, pending streams <clears throat> and things like that. Okay, thank you. You almost done? I, I, I'm good. You're good. <laughs> if you guys are good, I'm good. <laughs> well, one, um, I deal with you quite often. As you know, I have many people call us about issues with NYSEC. Uh, we had a representative here that lived in our town was John Dunford, then it handed off to Kathleen Abels. Then after Kathleen and John left, and Kathleen was, not that John wasn't, I didn't deal with John because I wasn't here, but Kathleen was here as a representative and I was here. And I thought after Kathleen, I said, boy, she's local. I can call her at any time. And unfortunately for us, Aziz, who you came in afterwards have really done a great job. Well, th and thank you. I wish I could say the same for some of the other vendors we deal with, the, like the major ones. We have a couple of problems, I think, with a few that, you know, they respond, but they just don't give us the uh, effort that you have put forward. But I do have a complaint. So okay. you can close one ear, but I want you to hear this and go back to your people. We have some issues here in this town, especially with a lot of businesses, like my old store at Route 6. They waited almost nine months now, some of it was his fault, I found out, but a lot was the fault of NYSEC. And we have a gas station down the road here who's been waiting for gas. I sent that to you about three weeks ago. We still haven't heard a word. I don't know what takes so long, but it's really wrong for them to take that long with it. There's something wrong with the system. And it's mostly commercial. I don't hear anything from the residents, but I hear a lot from the commercial, and they need it more than anyone. I mean, this poor guy down the road has been waiting a long time. But he's been waiting for this gas. I've had the planning board the chairman contact me. The owner has contacted me a couple of times. Can you put a fire on there? Maybe light a match to the gas that they're bringing to us. I I, I, I will I will follow up with them and uh, you know I do apologize for the delay. I I well I was on vacation so I apologize. I'm always apologizing uh, too. We, we apologize for things beyond yeah. our control, but please yeah. see what you can do. Yeah, I'll follow up with them and reach out to you tomorrow. Thank you. Appreciate your presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> we can continue to move on. Okay. 
There's nothing on the work session this evening, so I'll make a motion to go into the regular meeting portion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. First one is a resolution bond establishment, Lincoln Logistics. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the bond amount shall be established for the project set forth below. Project name, Lincoln Logistics Site Plan Site Improvements, $26,066,100. Erosion and sediment control, $1,403,400. And be further resolved that there shall be no further site disturbance of the subject premises and no building permit shall be issued until the erosion and sediment control bond in proper form and amount is supposed with the town clerk and associated, associated with inspection fees are paid to the town and be further resolved that a certified copy of this resolution shall be transmitted to the town clerk by the, to the applicant, planning board secretary, and building inspector forthwith. So move for discussion. Second. Now this is a project out on Fields Corner uh, that's been out there for quite some time now. It's been known as uh, Campus of Fields Corner, numerous names. It is now considered Lincoln Logistics. Um, it was second for discussion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number two, bond establishment Lincoln Logistics public improvements. Now therefore be resolved that the bond amount shall be established for the project set forth below. Project name, Lincoln Logistics, Brewster, Public Improvements, Erosion, okay, Public Improvements, $3,028,300. Erosion Sediment Control, $206,510. And be further resolved that there shall be no further site disturbance of the subject premises, Pugley Road, and Budding Area, and no highway work permits issued until the requisite public improvement bond and erosion and sediment control bond, both in proper form and amount, are posted with the town clerk and inspection fees paid and be further resolved that a certified copy of this resolution shall be transmitted by the town clerk to the applicant, planning board secretary, building inspector, and highway inspector forthwith. And this month, this bond in particular is for road improvements. So uh, is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Number three, resolution to support the application of the town and Col Southeast Cultural Arts Coalition, Southeast Old Town Hall Preservation, build an envelope, and entry stair. Now therefore it be resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Southeast hereby endorses and supports the application of the Town of Southeast Cultural Arts Coalition for grants under the Environmental Protection Fund for the following historic preservation projects. Southeast Old Town Hall Restoration, Building Envelope. And along with that comes two letters, one being sent to the Executive Director of Mid-Hudson Regional Economic Development Council and another letter to the Office and Parks Recreation Historic Preservation. We did this similarly last year, and this is upgraded to this year. Does our support just potentially help them be successful in getting the grants, or do we need to support it? No, we, we don't have to support it, but if we do support it, we've been trying to get this going for a long, long yeah, time. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. I'm just, you think that gives them a better chance of, of getting it? <laughs> I, I don't know if it gives them a better that chance, that but it, it has to help. Okay. Discussion? Was there a second? No. Uh, no I'll sorry. second. Second? Okay. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Elena, for getting that all done. Thank you. Okay. Um, next is a motion to set up a hearing for a special permit for sawmill wood processing for Thursday. July 28th, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public comment. Town board comment. Edwin and the uh, board, uh, I understand the fireworks went very well this year. Yes. I guess uh, the only thing is getting out is a little bit yes, lengthy, but that needs to be you go to any event, either you leave in the uh, seventh inning of a game, <laughs> or if you wait for the end of the fireworks, you're gonna there's some fireworks getting out, but that, just, that's normal. You just need to plan yep. to sit and relax. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I thought it went really well. It looked like everybody had a ton of fun. Uh, a lot of people hanging out by the DJ, dancing. It was really good. I okay. wish we could have charged Nysake for a booth <laughs> <laughs> to share that information. Yeah. Uh, any other comment? Okay. No comment. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. We close tonight's meeting. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all for coming.